Hey, this is Anthony Davis, and in today's episode, we're going to do a little bit of a quiz and talk about co-contraction of muscles. So let's start with the quiz. So moving from pose A to pose B, so starting from Chaturanga here and moving to upward facing dog, which of the following muscles contract eccentrically? Pause the video, take a moment to come up with your answer, and maybe think about which muscles are doing which on either side of the body. And we'll get to the answer in just a moment. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you get notifications when I release future videos on anatomy and yoga and meditation and all the all the good things. And of course, Please like this video. It helps other people see it. It helps me a lot. So I appreciate that. And share with your friends if they like anatomy. And uh, be sure to stick around to the end of the, end of the video because I'll give you some tips on how to make your chaturanga to upward facing dog and really any pose transition from one pose to the next a little bit smarter and a little bit more integrated head to toe, front to back, side to side and all that business. So let's get to the answer of this quiz. Okay, so in order to look at the answer of this quiz, we just need to really understand the definition of the word eccentrically. So I said, which of the uh, following m muscles contracts eccentrically in this transition from chaturanga to upward facing dog? Well, concentric, eccentric, and isometric contractions are the three basic types of muscle contractions. Uh, so concentric contractions just means that, uh, well, actually, let me back up. All of these just mean that the uh, the muscle is, is contracting, it's active, it's handling some kind of weight or resistance or load, okay? It's either pushing against gravity, uh, resisting your own body weight. Um, in yoga, we don't use weights, but if you were weightlifting, then you would be handling a weight. And while the muscle is dealing with that force, it's expending energy. There are three main ways that it can do that. Concentric, eccentric, and isometric. Okay, Concentric is the muscle gets short while it's under load. So the muscle actively shortens. Isometric is mostly what yoga poses are, which is the muscles are active, but they're staying the same length. They're not changing, you're not moving. And then eccentric is that the muscle, if you were putting down the weight, so you picked up the weight, now you're lowering it back down and your muscles get longer. Some muscles are gonna get longer while you're lowering that thing. So the muscle actively lengthens. Okay, so again, concentric, actively shortening. Isometric is most yoga poses, and that's the muscles are working, but they're not moving. And eccentric is that the muscle is working, but it's getting longer as it's working. Okay, so if it's getting longer as it's working, that's our question here is which of the muscles are getting longer as it's working? Which of the muscles is contracting eccentrically? Well, let's look at the triceps first, or let's look at the uh, erectors first because that's first on the list here. So erectors, erectors are the muscles right here on your back. So if we, here we go, I'll zoom in to make this easier. So if these are the muscles on your back, are they getting shorter or longer? Well, they're curling in. So they're, they're getting shorter, they're contracting and they're getting shorter. So it's, it's not the erectors because of that. Let's look at the triceps. I think, yeah, triceps are next. So triceps right here, they wrap from the shoulder and they wrap all the way around into the elbow. Did they get shorter or longer? Well, they got, they got shorter, right? Because they don't have to wrap around as much. The arm is straightening. And eventually the arm would be completely straight once you all get all the way to upward facing dog. This is not quite all the way to upward facing dog. Um, but they would be straight. Triceps are shorter. It's not triceps. Abdominal muscles. Well, the abdominal muscles in Chaturanga are pretty much neutral. So let me uh, get rid of, there we go. So the abdominal muscles, which are, you know, underneath are pretty much neutral. They're just in their normal resting position. But then here they're lengthening this way and they're lengthening up. So the abdominal muscles are getting longer. 
Are they working though, is the question. So just because a muscle is getting longer doesn't mean it's working, doesn't mean it's actually contracting eccentrically. So it is the, are the abdominal muscles and uh, are any other muscles eccentrically contracting? Well, if the abdominal muscles and hip flexors in this case, which is basically the whole front side of the body here, if they were not contracting, if they were not working, then the hips would, uh, so here are your hips, they would sag to the floor. Your hips would just hit the floor and then you'd be doing a cobra pose, not an upward facing dog. So in upward facing dog, there's a gap between your hips and the floor. So the abdominal muscles and the hip flexors are both working. Um, so abs definitely are contracting eccentrically. They are working and they're getting longer at the same time. And then the traps, well, the traps uh, here, let me get rid of some of this business here. So the traps are basically from here, right? So they're these guys. And as the, there's a few things here. So as you move into upward facing dog, you're spreading your, uh, the front of your chest, you're opening up the chest and you're drawing your shoulder blades back even further. And, um, by looking up whoop, and, whoa. okay. So there we go. And by looking up, you're actually shortening the back of the neck, which means that your, uh, your, your traps are actually shortening to help you look up. So the traps are, uh, no, not the triceps, not the erectors. So here's a, a general overview. If we have upward facing dog, um, concentrically, we're contracting, we're shortening the paraspinal muscles. So all the muscles up your back, uh, your rhomboids, you're drawing your shoulder blades together, your traps, you're drawing your shoulder blades together, you're looking up, um, your glutes, you're squeezing your butt, uh, and all these things. So and then isometric, once you hold the pose, if you were to hold upward facing dog for five breaths, uh, you're not moving. So then all of the muscles are contracting isometrically. But if you were moving from chaturanga to upward facing dog here, so moving from chaturanga, oh, I'm leaning the wrong way, chaturanga to upward facing dog, then uh, the eccentric contraction would happen on the front side of the body. So all of this stuff is getting longer, but it's working. So now let's talk about this pose. And I promised you that I would tell you uh, a little bit about how to make your yoga pose uh, smarter and, you know, uh, more integrated from head to toe. So here's the deal. You know, a lot of people, I could hear an argument. Um, if you get, if you, if all you know is your textbook anatomy, I know what a concentric and an eccentric uh, contraction are. Uh, and all you know is well, your prime movement. Well, if I were to make an, I could make a convincing argument that the only muscles working here are the backside of the body. Because if you look at the pose, you're moving into, let me get rid of some of this uh, stuff here so it's less confusing. There we go. So you're moving into extension. You're moving into hip extension, into spinal extension. So what muscle performs the action of hip extension? Your butt. What muscles, uh, and some other stuff, but um, what muscles perform the action of spinal extension? In other words, a back bend. Well, it's all the muscles on your back. It's your, your erectors, your uh, paraspinal muscles and some other stuff, uh, QL, for example. And therefore I could say, well, the, in your upward facing dog, in your transition from chaturanga to upward facing dog, just focus on squeezing your butt and squeezing your back because those are the muscles that pull you into extension. Look at an anatomy textbook. Those are the muscles that perform the action of extension. However, if this was the way you were thinking, this would be an incomplete story. It's technically true, but it's not complete. So 
the full truth is that yes, the the back side of the body is doing that. But then I could hear um, another side. Uh, I'll get to the full truth in a minute. The other side of this uh, line of reasoning would say, no, 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 you're not using the back side of the body. The back side of the body is not the one that's um, controlling the option, the, uh, the the movement. Gravity is trying to pull you down, and the front side of your body should be slowly releasing itself into gravity. So it's an eccentric contraction that slowly allows the body to conform to gravity and take on the shape of upward facing dog. You get me? The abdominals start tight, the hip flexors start tight in chaturanga right here. And as you move into upward facing dog, they allow the body to give into gravity a little bit as you uh, turn into this upward facing dog position. So that would be maybe an opposite argument. So you could imagine <laughs> with how willing people are to fight about anything that one person might take the stance of, ah, oh, you got to squeeze the back muscles. You got to squeeze your butt because those are the muscles that perform the action of extension. Look, here's a book, read a book. Why don't you read a book? And then somebody else is going to say, no, dum dum. Uh, the front side of your body is slowly allowing this uh, controlled descent towards gravity. Okay, so the real truth, duh, is the front side of the body is melting. Okay, well, you're you're both right, but you're both also wrong because you're disagreeing. Uh, because you're both right, there's no disagreement. Both of these things are happening at the same time, right? The truth is that in order to coordinate a movement, we're taught that if a um, if you contract one muscle, then the muscles on the opposite side of your body are no longer in the picture. So if I squeeze my biceps muscles here, okay. So if I if I contract my biceps, then my triceps on the back side of my um, arm need to relax. That's what we're taught. We're taught that if I s contract my biceps, then my triceps need to relax. So, ipso facto, in this scenario right here, you would think that only one side of the body could be working while the other side of the body needs to relax. But that's not true at all. In dynamic movement, the anatomy, the stuff in the textbook is just wrong. So in dynamic movement, what we're dealing with is that both the back side of the body is pulling you, and at the same time as you're being pulled on the back, the front side of the body is allowing that movement to happen, okay? So they're both working together. It's teamwork from head to toe, all the way on the front side of the body and the back side of the body. There's a coordinated effort. And so this effort is called, um, well, usually we use this in sort of a different way, but that's okay. Um, it's a co- contraction. Okay. So co-contraction is both sides of the body essentially are all at all sides, not just sides, on all angles, 360 degrees, head to toe, front to back, side to side, diagonally, you know, at every angle, muscles around the entire body are allowing this movement to happen. There's no, oh, this muscle's contracting and this muscle's relaxing. It's all working. Some of them are working concentrically and others are working eccentrically at the same time, but they're all working. So even if they're lengthening, they're not relaxing. So that's, I think, a common misunderstanding in yoga is like, oh, if it's lengthening, it's relaxing. Or if it's on this side of the body, it's relaxing. And if it's on this side of the body, it's contracting and working. It's not really true. It's all working. So... Um, I hope that helps. And if you've got questions about this, uh, I know, you know, you know, in yoga, we focus a lot about like, oh, you got to release tension, release tension. Well, it turns out that in order to perform this movement, your whole body has to generate tension <laughs> and control that tension. 
So tension's not the enemy. We want to be able to uh, use that tension to our advantage in graceful, fluid motion. Strong movement. Cool. All right. That's enough stuff for today. Uh, please like the video, do the things, subscribe, share with your friends, do all that. It helps me. Uh, it helps other people because, you know, this is free educational stuff. And I will see you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.